healthcare is not just medical. It's social, it's engineering to deliver the solutions, it's the science which underpins all of medicine. One really key challenge is that healthcare costs are increasing because of the ageing population. There is also, of course, always the drive to deliver a better standard of healthcare, and that's usually more expensive. So we've got to find a way of squaring that particular circle. I think one of the great things that's happened over the last decade with the Human Genome Project, for example, is that it's shown that you can start to get a large amount of information I think one of the great challenges in going forward in post-genomic science and engineering is to actually turn that information into knowledge. So there's a lot of data out there if you like. And I think one of the important things is, is, to, is to do something practical with that avalanche of data. We bring a very close working relationship between the university and the hospital. We jealously guard our position in a teaching hospital. This is really important with respect to credibility, with respect to translation with respect to everything about bringing these tools from a twinkle in an academic's eye to a clinical environment. Why has Sheffield been successful? Well, I think we have a reputation that we say what we'll do and then we deliver on it. When we set up the Chelsea Institute here in Chemical and Biological Engineering, the idea was that we had a concept where we thought we could take the tools that we understood from chemical engineering and this is in design of large process plant, steel works, petrochemical refineries, these kinds of things, and apply some of the same concepts to solving biological problems at non-traditional interfaces. And in particular, we decided to work with colleagues in the medical school to see whether we could use some of the same understanding to solve biological problems of importance to human health. And that's really where we decided to, to focus this institute. And also, interestingly, we've obtained quite a lot of money in general in Chelsea from the pharmaceutical industry and that's particularly focused on biopharmaceutical production, in particular so protein drugs in other words. And so we've got a lot of the large pharmaceutical companies sponsoring studentships here, directly funding research and coming to visit. I think the investment has really made that possible because without the facilities that you see around here, it wouldn't have been possible to do that. Our principal area of research is repairing human body parts, either using synthetic materials or as people are very aware, using living cells to engineer functional tissues to repair the body. So this is our tissue engineering and tissue culture laboratory. Tissue culture, the growing of living cells inside these incubators, is a really fundamental technique and technology for many areas of science. This often cuts out the use of animals in research, and if we're using human cells, there's a much clearer idea about how the body's going to respond to a new material. This is the future for medicine. It combines elements of classical engineering and making medical devices together with aspects of stem cell science and putting the two together to actually have a form of therapy that can be used to address when the body goes wrong. We've been working with the burn surgeons in Sheffield since 92. We've been looking at developing cell carriers to improve the quality of cells that leave the lab and get onto the patient and also to try and make some aspects of this commercially viable as well. I think the key strengths of our research group are that we are interdisciplinary. We have cell biologists, tissue engineers, material scientists, polymer chemists. We work a lot with uh, polymeric materials and polymeric nanotechnology, and we definitely are one of the strongest, if it's not the strongest in the country, polymer nanotechnology groups here. In the last 10 years or so, there has been a great reduction in the amount of new therapies that we can bring into the clinics. And that's where it now is becoming extremely interesting and challenging from the physical scientist point of view, using the same expertise that has been used in the past for developing new nanoscopic objects, they can be adapted into actually tackle some of these pharmaceutical challenges. There's little doubt that we need to change the way that we live, the way the society is structured in order to accommodate the ageing population, but we also should embrace some of the benefits that an ageing society can bring, as well as the challenges. We're looking at ways that information and communication technologies and services supported by information and communication technologies can start to meet these challenges of caring for older people in their homes. We're working with the National Health Service, the NHS. They're interested in improving care whilst keeping costs at a reasonable level and we're trying to help them do that. This whole area of research needs an interdisciplinary approach. We have clinical scientists, health services researchers, computer scientists, engineers. Being healthy now and ageing in a healthy manner is not just a medical problem and it's become recognised that these problems are 
so complex that we require the tools that we've developed in mathematics and in science and in engineering to actually be able to solve them. The point of the computation really is either to measure things that cannot easily be measured in the human or to reduce the amount of invasive measurements that we have to make that might be uncomfortable for you. We can now do an analysis in two or three hours that took two or three days. That's, that's fantastic. But unless we actually deliver it into the clinic, then it's all meaningless. We need to translate these to the clinic. It, it, it's why we're here. Healthcare issues are complex and we can't solve them from an individual specialist's point of view. You need people with different knowledge sets and different backgrounds. That is a very creative way to develop solutions to problems.